Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today, let's talk about a system that has infinitely many solutions. And we are going to first solve the system using row re reduction, and then we will talk about how to write down the answer. And then after that, we are going to uh, talk about uh, uh, the geometric interpretation for what that answer represents, right? So let's actually get started right now. So first, we are going to rewrite the system as an augmented matrix. So the first step is that we are going to write it as we have 3, negative 5, and then 1. And then we have 1, negative 2, and then 1. So you can see that this is the coefficient matrix. And then on the right-hand side of the bar, we actually get the right-hand side of the equation. So now that's the matrix right here. And what happened is that we are going to we are going to start doing the row operations. One row operation that we can do is to interchange the first and the second row. And then we are going to get one, negative two, and then one. So I can move the one in the one, one entry. So that's why I'm doing this row operation right here. And then we are going to get the zero here. And then we have three, negative five, one, and then four. Okay, so what's the next step? Next step is to use the one and then we remove this three, right? So let's do that. So if we do that here, then that's a row operation that requires us to multiply the, one of the rows by some number. In this case, it would be minus three, right? So multiply row one by negative three plus row two, and then change row two. Okay, so that's the idea that we are using here. So we are going to um, just copy down. We're just going to copy down the first row, and then we are going to now do the calculation for the second row. So if you multiply the whole row by negative three, then you're going to get the zero here, right? When you add to the second row. And then negative two times negative three, you get six, six minus five is positive one. And then one times negative three is negative three plus one, negative two. And then because that's a zero here, so you are just going to add the zero to the four, which will still give you a four. Is that okay? And then just one more step right here, and then we can turn it into reduced row echelon form. So all we need to do is to use this one, and then try to remove this negative two, right? Turn it into a zero. So another row operation right here, which is to do what? Which is to multiply, right? Um, row two by two. And then add to row one and then change row one. So we get zero, one, negative two, and then put the four here. Okay, so we get one and then now actually we have one and then zero. As you can see, we take this one, multiply by two, and then add to that. Negative two times two is negative four plus one. Get negative three. And then four times two is eight, right? So you just add to the zero, so you just get the eight here. And then we can actually now go back to the system, right? We can go from the matrix to just writing down the system right here, which will actually give us x minus 3z is equal to 8. And then the other one is y minus 2z is equal to 4. Do you see that we can actually just solve for x here, solve for y here, in both in terms of z, right? So if you do that, then you are going to get x is equal to... 8 plus 3z, and then y is equal to, now move the 2z over, you get 4 plus 2z, right? <clears throat> and then z is just the z, so you can actually just come up with the answer. So we can write the answer as x, y, z, right? And that's equal to, um, so now we can write an expression for x in terms of z. So you get 8 plus 3z, and then uh, 4 plus 2z, right? And then the z is just equal to the z. And as you can see, then you get the, uh, the family of solutions. So what happened is that we can actually um, just try some stuff right here. Um, for example, why do we say that we have infinite many solutions? Because 
Now we have Z being the parameter. Z is just any real number that we can pick to plug in, right? So for example, let's say if I pick Z, okay. So if I pick Z to be um, zero, okay, then what do we get here? Then the X, Y, and Z, right, is equal to now if you plug the zero into the Z, you just get the eight here. Right, so you get the eight, and then if you plug the z equals zero in here, you are going to get the four. And then if you plug the z in here, you just get the zero. So this is actually a solution to that original system, right? Because you can do you can do a quick check here. Three times eight is twenty four, right? Twenty four minus five times four minus twenty, right? So twenty four. Minus 20 is just what? Just 4 plus z is equal to 0. So 4 plus 0 is equal to 4. So see that those three values will satisfy the first equation. And it will actually also satisfy the second equation because we have 8, right? And then minus 2 times the 4, which is 8 minus 8. So we get 0. Plus z is also equal to 0. So you're just going to get 0 plus 0, which is 0. See that that's, that's one solution. Let's say if we plug in uh, another one. Let's say we plug in another one. Let's say we plug in uh, z equals, let's say just one, right? Then what happens? I'm just picking easy numbers. You can actually plug in any other numbers like pi or 1000, right? So you plug the one in here, then you are going to get another solution to the system. So what do we get here? What do we have for the first component for the x, which is eight plus three times one, right? So you just get 11. And then we plug the one in here, four plus two times one, so we get the six, right? And then the z is equal to one. So see that that's another solution. So as you can see, we can just, we have infinitely many choices for the z. You can also plug in the decimal in there, right? And <clears throat> that that's really just to say that, okay, so the system has infinitely many solutions. So that's one node that I want to talk about here. And the other one is that, this is another note that we have right here is that remember that those that equation it's an <clears throat> is an equation of a plane right so that's actually two planes that we are getting right here so 3x minus 5y plus z is equal to 4 and then x minus 2y plus z is equal to 0 so what does that solution represent the solution to this system Is actually the intersection of the two planes. Is that okay? Is the the intersection of the two planes. Now when two planes intersect, right? If we just draw a um, just a cartoon picture right here, right? And then do you see what's going on? Um, Uh, so do you see that you see that that's what where how do they intersect they actually intersect in a line so this is the this is the intersection so that's a line of intersection and actually in another video i actually solve it using the uh, the way that people usually learn in uh, the multivariable calculus when we parameterize um, this line of intersection. And what I did in that video was that I used, I found two points from the system and then I get the direction vector. And so the answer that I got in the other video, if you're interested, you can see in the description and also you can see the little card that I'm showing this video right now, right? So um, the answer that I got from that one was, um, was a vector function which looks like this and so that was 2 plus 3t okay and then 2t and then negative 2 plus t is that okay and then uh, i use t as the parameter in that one so what happened is that you can see that the coefficient of the t for all three components right here is actually the same coefficient as the the coefficients of the z here because we're using z as the parameter right here 
Is that okay? And then um, the point that we use, of course, will be different, but it doesn't really matter. You can you can actually easily verify that eight, four, and zero, which is this point. It also would lie in here, as you can see. I mean, it will lie in this line right here. Okay, how do you verify that? You can actually just set the eight equal to this, set the four equal to that, and then set the zero equal to this, and then you figure out the t, and then the t will satisfy all three equations that you're seeing. But we are not going to be doing here. Is that okay? So that's that's um, what we did here. Is that okay? So we'll do more linear algebra uh, next time. I'm going to, uh, right now, we're just talking about the basic stuff. I need more time to do more preparation on the, on the, uh, the more advanced stuff in linear algebra. Is that okay? So that's it for this. To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe my channel. It will give me more support to make videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.